Okay, great. Yeah, so welcome again. Um, my name is Ben Jones. This is Tableau for Data Journalism Week 1 Lecture. We're going to go ahead and get started. So welcome to the class. This is an exciting, you know, five-week uh, period where we can spend together um, really just getting used to learning Tableau Public, getting used to creating visualizations, dashboards, story points, and embedding that on your on your site. Uh, just a little bit of background here as far as who I am. So I started using Tableau Public about three years ago, and uh, I just uh, have a, a data visualization site called DataRemix.com. And uh, so this is my little website here, and I started just blogging about uh, visualization subjects, creating visualizations, um, you know, talking more about this space. And uh, so I was real fortunate last year to get the chance to um, joined Capital Copper and moved up from the Los Angeles area to Seattle with my family. So we love it up here, and especially in the summertime, it's the gorgeous part of the country. Um, and so I managed the Capital Public product. They have a small team here, which is really um, a group of, of awesome, you know, uh, both creative as well as analytical uh, analysts, data analysts. And really our mission and our whole goal is to help journalists use Capital Public. And to do that, we run these training sessions. We provide support via email. Uh, we go to conferences like IRE or NICA. Uh, we'll be at ONA September in Chicago coming up, and we'll do some training sessions there. Um, we publish tutorials and sort of you know, how-to blog posts on our blog. We just really try to um, you know give people the skills that they need to use the product and get the most out of it. We run contests and interact. Um, on social with what we call the community of authors. These are people that are using Tableau Public. Uh, the folks obviously with the highest reach or the most readers would be the journalists out there who are using Tableau Public. This could be anything from, you know, um, a national or even international uh, newspaper like The Guardian or CNBC, and it could be uh, a local um, online newspaper as well. So we've seen visualizations pop up in print. We've seen them on TV. And primarily, of course, we see them on the web. And so uh, just a few things here about the course before we start diving into data and working with Tableau and so forth. Um, let me orient you on a few sites for you to be familiar with. One is our Reddit board, and that's called Tableau for DJ underscore cohort four. So you can see the fourth group that are going through this program. This is actually the first one I'm doing. Uh, I've had my team run the first three, so um, I'm definitely uh, excited about you know what my first chance to uh, interact directly with you all in this way. Um, so let me just, in case you haven't seen this site, uh, I think most of you here on the call have, but I'll copy and paste this into the chat window. And what you can do here, uh, okay, it sounds like I'm a little hard to hear. Is that something that's a little easier? Um, we'll see if there's maybe a better microphone for next time, but I'll do my best here to speak directly into the mic. Uh, okay, so this is the, uh, there in the chat window, you'll see the Tableau for the Big Cohort Board. And by the way, this is intended to be really interactive. Obviously, we're recording sessions for your classmates that aren't able to use to time zones or what have you to join or to schedule. Um, but that being said, it's not really going to be delivered like some type of pre-program presentation. It's a very interactive, it's intended to be very fluid. You know, questions are more than encouraged. That's really what this is all about. And your classmates will benefit as well because there's a good chance if you have a question, they will as well. Okay, I also had you all fill out a, um, a Google form in order to just make sure we have all the information here about you. Um, so let me just go ahead and grab that again here. Here's a Google form. If you haven't filled it out, you can see I've got in the chat window as well. So it's a simple kind of way of getting started. Fill out the form, sign up for Reddit if you haven't already. It's free, you know, um, and you should be able to. Um, one minute to be able to grab you. Yeah, it's free to sign up for uh, the, 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 the live form and actually get the link to the form. Okay, apologies there. 
giving me the wrong URL. But um, that's really all it takes, you know, to get, get set up and started here. Um, you've got a Reddit board to communicate with your classmates to post the homework assignments and links to them. I'll continue to put reminders up here. Um, please do go ahead and introduce yourself using just by replying to or adding a comment to this thread. Um, I'll introduce yourself. <laughs> and I have done so as well as a handful of your classmates here. So Sophie, Aaron, Yuri, Danny, John and Pete, thank you all for taking the time to let us know a little bit about yourself. So that's cool. I mean, really, this is a nice networking opportunity as well. You're going to be you know, going through this course with uh, a few dozen here, you know, people who are either um, in data journalism or, or learning about it. Um, so we really selected the participants for the program, you know, uh, as individuals who are associated with a news organization. Um, so in that sense, it's a collective group. Um, so, you know, welcome to it. Um, also, I want to introduce you or orient you on a few other resources that are out there. Uh, one is the website, so tableausoftware.com slash public or tableaupublic.com um, is our website. And so you can see a little bit about the product. Also, we've got galleries where you can see um, things that have been done. Um, you can see in the community section here what we call a biz of the day. And so this is, uh, we select one visualization every day from all around the world. Uh, you know, we're seeing this is really a global uh, user base for this product. So, you know, we see La Nacion in Argentina, or the, as I mentioned before, The Guardian in the UK, or, you know, The Age in Australia, which is in the Melbourne area. Um, the Seattle Times right here in our own backyard, you know, as well as the um, dozens of countries at this point. So that's exciting. You get to see from um, uh, data stories being told. Um, you know, really, and that's the point of Tableau Public, is it's free product, right? This class is free, the product is free. Um, and it's because Tableau looked at it and said, hey, you know, our mission is to help people see and understand their data. And that's not just company data or corporate data that's proprietary. This is really any data. And as you know, um, more and more data is becoming available on online portals. But you know, you all fight the fight of the uh, you know, Freedom of Information Act request and gathering data that should be um, in the, the public eye. And Tableau Public is a way to make that happen in a very visual and stimulating and vision and healing way, as well as in a way that tells a accurate and uh, enlightening story with, with numerical information. Right? So that's what Tableau Public is all about. Um, so it's kind of a cool thing, and, and what we're seeing right now is this pretty cool community of people who are um, who are using the product, and we're learning a lot from each other as well. Okay, cool. So that's the product, so that's the site, that's your class, and the different ways in which you can uh, get involved. You know, um, obviously, if you haven't downloaded the product already, feel free to do that. It's free, and now as of uh, last month, it's uh, able to be installed on both Windows and Mac. And so that's a big thing, you know, for news in all around the world. There are so many, not just in the graphics department, but in all functions of the news in the past. So now you can run um, Tableau natively on the Mac. What I'm going to be doing today, as far as the demonstration is concerned, will be done on the Windows. I'll probably run a couple of the lectures here in the, in the future on Mac. Um, but you can follow along. It's really um, very few differences in the steps we'll take. Uh, between creating a visual vision and then creating a map. I happen to think that the product is, is uh, kind of, you know, more beautiful to interact with on a map just because of the, um, the nature of, of the resolution of the screen and the controls and so forth. Um, excellent. Okay, so let's get started. So what I want to show you in lecture one is the Tableau user interface, how to connect Tableau to a data set, how to understand the way Tableau parses out the data you know, in that data set. And then how to create basic visualization and then combine them into something new that we just launched with version 1.2, which is called story points. And these are essentially ways for you to sequence or put together um, different visualizations in a certain order that tells the story. So, for example, let me show you what I mean by that. This would be an example here in our visit the day page. 
all of these are story telling. Uh, we just launched the product, but we're seeing some pretty incredible um, stories laid out. Uh, so here's an example of John Schoen at CNBC out in New Jersey. Tells the history of the Dow 30, which is the most 30 companies that are supposed to be part of the Dow index. And he's showing that an area, a fact area chart here. Uh, all the different phases, going backwards in time, so this would be the, the recession here, the great recession as it's known. You can see the tech boom and the surge in the Dow 30. And you can walk back in time, right, and see these different decades. And you can go all the way back to 1920 and see how this um, index uh, trended over the course of that. And it's told in a story, right, in the sense that these points, individual phases, are sequenced one after another, which facilitates the user going through, you know, this, this exact flow. Um, another example, if I were to go back here, would be, uh, you know, a different kind of story, perhaps, which is, uh, as I mentioned, uh, the age. So this is Craig Butt, journalist out of Melbourne, talks about what's going on with apartments in Melbourne. And so you can see he's talking about the, the number of, of uh, homes that have been built in the city of Melbourne so far in 2014, almost totally in 2013. And then if you step to it, he talks about what is planned to be built here, and then next year, how that trend is going to continue. Uh, on forward. So essentially now we go through an extended sequence of looking at what is going on in, in specific um, neighborhoods. Right? So this is, this is a great way of helping people understand the trend in their neighborhood. And this is a kind of story that uh, people really care about because it affects their backyard, it affects the things around them. And this information is going to be uh, helpful for them, it's going to be something that concerns them. Uh, but in any case, it's, it's a data story, and, and the story is, is born out of the data. And it's not one that I would call it, you know, uh, frivolous or um, silly. It's a really an important story. <laughs> so, um, again, a great way of just sequencing all these different charts and dashboards together. So we'll, we'll show how to do that, and, and we only have another about half an hour. I'm going to wrap it up at 10.45 Pacific time, and hopefully that works for you all. But I'll show you how to do it. Then I'll leave you the home assignment at the end of the lecture for you to go ahead and do that. And um, actually, let me just, let me, it sounds like everybody is hearing, I mean, a little bit of a few here. So, uh, I'm going to see if there's a better, uh, unfortunately, actually, yeah, hold on one minute. I'm going to give it a quick for this. Just give me one minute. Okay, um, question, can you all hear me now? And is that better or worse? All right, great. Well, ironically, that's actually much easier for me. I just took my headset out, and now I'm just talking directly to the microphone of the laptop here. So, um, okay, good. Well, I apologize, and hopefully the recording is bearable. I guess I'll get to find out by uh, listening to it myself. But uh, good. Well, for the future, then we'll, we'll run it like this so that you all can hear. Uh, still a little bit of a hum. I imagine that's probably from the monitor or something like that. So we'll, we'll work on it. Thanks for the feedback, guys. I'm definitely going to work on getting um, some kind of a different microphone here for, for going forward. So some learning growing pains here for me as well. Okay. Uh, so let's go ahead and, and talk about what we're going to visualize today. So last Friday was World Population Day. And that was, um, it seems like there's a day for everything, right? I just found out the other day my anniversary is World S'mores Day or National S'mores Day or something. So, uh, so that's August 10th, but so this is coming up here. But, uh, yeah, World Population Day. So we found population data by the World Bank, and they show population by country going back for quite some time. And you can go to this site, and I'll just reference 
copy and paste this into the chat window in case you want to see um, where we source the data from. And from here, you can download a CSV. And so we did a little bit of formatting of the data, and we're going to cover a lot of formatting in week three. So suffice it to say, what we did, and here's the data in Excel now, is we converted this into a long table, or uh, essentially a long list, right, of every country, uh, what region it's in, year, and its population. And so year is a field, and you see Aruba, for example, here, going all the way down from 1960 going down to 2013. And you can see the, the count of population. It's a pretty simple data set. It's not really that complex. It, uh, and in that sense, it should be a good one for us to learn here on week one. All right, so that's the data. It exists in Excel. I'm also going to send you now, just in case you happen to be following along, a link to a Dropbox folder where you can grab this data set. Right, bear with me one minute here. Share Dropbox link. Okay, so. I just pasted this in there to the chat window, and you can click on that, you can download the file. So now I'm going to open up Tableau Public 8.2. So let's grab that. I want 8.1, and then Tableau Public 8.2. Okay, and again, this is the version you can download from our website. Okay, good. So this is kind of the original page I encountered. It's intended to help you see this of the day and get started with training and, and so forth. And then uh, you can see a link for our latest blog post there. That's cool. But I want to open data. So I want to start visualizing data. Now, what I get is this connect experience. And you can see that Tableau Public allows you to connect to Microsoft Access, Excel, text files, or something called OData. And we won't worry about that for now. But what we have is a simple Excel file. So let's grab. Let's grab this uh, I'm going to put here. And it's called Fort Worth. Uh, let's move, sorry. We have World Bank history. World Bank population. Okay, great. So let's open that. Now, what Tableau allows me to do is drag any of the sheets in that Excel file out onto this canvas here. So let's grab the one called Country Dash Tableau. And that's the re, what we call the reshape data. And again, more on that in week three. But I've formatted the data so that it's friendly for using the Tableau. Well, there it is. And you can see that Tableau gives us a little preview of what is in this data set. Actually, it gives us the whole thing. And you can see right away that it's taken all of our um, row one header column names and converted them into these data fields. You can also see that it's interpreting these fields as different data field types, which is really cool because Tableau, for example, already knows that country name is a geographic field through this little globe icon. It also knows the same thing about country code. It recognizes that code as a geographic field, which means it'll be very easy for me to make maps, uh, which when you're going to tell the story of the population of the world, it's a good chance you want to make a map. Region, so I've got a text field. ABC it, it says that that's a string. And then I've got some indicator names and codes, which are World Bank codes for their data set, also string. The year is a number. OK, we're going to leave that as it is. But I want to convert the year date. So year date right now is 1-1-1961, 1-1-1961. We want to create that, change it. We can change. Not only does Tableau tell us how it's interpreted in data fields, it allows us to make some changes to that. So if I want the year date in the calendar field, I'm going to click on ABC, OK? And I can change that to a date. And now you'll see Tableau works on it a little bit. It takes a look at the data, and it comes back and says, OK, I get a calendar icon here. So Tableau saying, right, I'll recognize this as a date going forward, which is going to be, which is going to be helpful. OK, so now we can connect to, or go to the worksheet. So this is all this was intended to do, to show us what the data set looks like, give us a heads up on how Tableau is interpreting the data. And now we can, and we can also do various things to show later on down the road, like connect. There's a lot of white space here because I can bring in other data sets and join and things like that. We're not going to cover that yet. That's a little more advanced, but we will get to that. So let's go to the worksheet. Okay, so now what we see is, what we, this is what we call the blank canvas. Uh, that we like to paint on. So we use data to paint uh, visualizations to make a visual 
experience out of the numerical information that uh, we've connected to. And you can see now all of these fields have been moved and are repositioned into these two areas called dimensions and measures. So let's just orient on the UI. There's dimensions, there's measures, there's what we call um, the marks card. Okay, this is marks essentially are um, shapes or uh, values, you know, visual symbols that are going to appear on this big canvas here out of the data. Okay, so there's a, an axis area. You can see there's rows and columns, an area there to make rows and columns out of the data. There's a show me uh, panel. You can see you can open or close that show me panel just by clicking on the header. And this is essentially going to tell you how you can visualize the data that you clicked on or selected. And so that you can see here. And then at the bottom here, you can see that I've got sheets and I can make new sheets just like with Excel. I can also, if I want to make a new sheet, I just click on this first icon to the left. If I want to make a dashboard, which we'll talk about more next week, you can click on this icon to create a dashboard. A sheet is, a, is simply a single visualization. A dashboard is where you combine multiple visualizations together onto the same, into the same view. And you can make those individual visualizations interact with each other. Okay, so more on that to come. But for now, I want to show you how easy it is to make a map. You just double click on country name. And that's a double click, left mouse click on country name. And Tableau gave us a little dot that shows us where every single country is in the data set that we have connected to. And you can see it's almost every country, which is cool. Now, it's just a little blue dot, so I haven't actually encoded anything. I can just tell where all my data is. Notice that there's also this thing in the bottom right called two unknowns. Let's look at what that says. If you click on two unknowns, it's basically Tableau's way of saying, hey, you had a value in this country name data field or column that we didn't know what to do with. Remarkably, it knew what to do with all of these other ones, but it doesn't know what to do with two. So it says, Would you, you know, I'll give you some choices here. You can filter it out. You can show it at zero, zero, latitude, longitude, so it's probably not a very smart choice for a map. Or you can edit the unknown location. Let's choose that. Edit unknown location. You can see that there are two. One is others. Well, that's because we, and this is not a World Bank thing, but when I formatted the data, I lumped other small countries together into a bucket of others. These are little islands, these are tiny countries, these are countries where the World Bank does not provide the actual um, population data for that. So I'm just going to filter this one out. And so we'll get to that here in a minute. But for this next one, since Martin, notice that we tricked Tableau by including Dutch part as a parenthetical phrase after since Martin. But if you click on matching location in this drop down menu here, notice that I can enter a latitude and longitude if I do it for that specific country. Or I can see if it's in here. Let's see if it's in here. So let's scroll down and lo and behold, uh, we can see print markings right here below Singapore and above Slovakia in alphabetical order. Okay, and we can say okay. And now that location appears. Um, a very important button here in Tableau is in the very top left corner. There's a back arrow that's undo. So if we click undo, that would that country would go away. Now I don't believe it refers. To, I don't know where it is. Yeah. Uh, it's so small, it's kind of hard to see where it where it pops up. Um, but suffice it to say, there's a new dot out there somewhere. It's probably right underneath another one. Okay, so now we've got all these dots. We still have this one unknown. So we'll filter that one out. We shouldn't map something called other anyway. It doesn't really belong on a map. That's that's fun. Great. So now we've got all these little dots, right? So again, what would be interesting here would be to size these dots based on the population. And now we need to be careful, right? Because we know that. Well, let's see what happens if we just take this population, what we call a pill, right? This is a little pill shaped um, control. So I can take the population and drag it. Oh, and by the way, before I do that, just notice that what, what Tableau has done is it put latitude and longitude generated on rows and columns, right? Row is like your latitude, columns is like your longitude, right? Or far from the time meridian and rows how far from the equator or up and down or rows. These are generated fields. These are fields that Tableau has lookup values 
the word baseball, but it sees the word United States in a field that it has mapped as a geographic field. It has the latitude longitude right there in the software for the middle of that. And the same thing goes for every country. So uh, that's why there are these field terms that latitude longitude generated. And that's why they appear on the road. Okay, we can manually create this map by dragging these out. And notice the country name is here in the detail. And that's why it knows the map countries, not cities or counties or zip codes, which are all things that you can map this tableau, by the way. If you look at, let's see what kinds of things we could make a map about. If you look in country name and click the down arrow, geographic role tells you all the different locations that tableau has lookup values and in some cases shapes. And more on that later, but for now, just know that it's a pretty powerful thing for you to really quickly and easily make a map. Not just a map, but an interactive map. Let's see how we can interact with it. So first, let's drag population onto the shop. So all we do is grab it, click the left mouse, hold the left mouse, move it up here to this little size or landing pad, and then we get these dots in the size. Now, I can make these sizes well, first of all, notice that the numbers are not real, right? Because it's summing. It's not just population, it's the sum of the population for each country, which extends into the billion. Well, that's not real, right? Why is that? Well, that's because what Tableau has done is sum up the population for each country for all of the years for which there is data, all the way back to 1960. But I don't want that. I just want to see the population for one year. So how do I filter them now? For one year. So that's what these filters, the filter area is for. So I can click here and drag it here. Actually, let's just click the down arrow and say show quick filter. But before, actually, before I do that, I'm going to show you one other important detail here about the way Tableau recognizes data. Did you notice that some fills are green, like this one, and some fills are blue, like this one? Region is blue, here is green. Why? Well, a blue pill is what is called a discrete data field type. In other words, it's ways for you to bucket your data, slicing and dicing it, categorizing it, creating uh, table columns, and so forth. Green is continuous, which is a data field that Tableau recognizes as being uh, more like an axis in the sense that there can be values above, below, in between. It's a number that um, has a has continuity on an axis as opposed to being in a bucket. But I want to treat the year in this case as an individual bucket. So I would I can change from continuous to discrete. If I click in the little down arrow, when I hover over the year, the fill highlights, the down arrow appears, I click the down arrow, and I can modify stuff about this year data field. And if I'm going too fast or if I'm confusing you, please let me know. But for now, Let's do this, convert it to the street. Okay, so I'll go down here and convert year to the street. Notice what happens then is year turns blue. Before it was green, now it's blue. And then down arrow, I can say show quick filter. And on the right hand side, I can see that I now have the control to select a specific year or deselect a specific year. I uncheck all, it goes away. I go down here to 2013. Now I've got data for just 2013. So China has 1.3 billion. That's about right. You see what I did then? I just made Tableau show or size the country circle according to the sum of the population for now just one year, 2013. That's just that one number. I can change the way this quick filter looks. This is a really long, awkward, funky list. I like the glass it. In fact, with a year, so in this little uh, panel over here, which is still the filter control, if we click the down arrow, just like for the pill, same thing, little down arrow. If I want to modify this, I highlight over the header and click the down arrow for the year quick filter. And I click slider, single value. And now I can step through. I can step through these years one by one by one. I probably wouldn't want to show it off because we're talking about them later. This shows how the population is changing. And it's not really a uh, dramatic visual effect because it's just like in proportion to each other, they've been more or less. Okay. okay, so but now I'm just looking at 2013 data, which is great. 
You know, I think the dots are too small. I don't know about you, but I can barely even cover over this one for Saudi Arabia. Well, the size landing pad doesn't just give you the ability to drop a field onto it. It also gives you the ability to change it so you can click on size because it's really slider. And we can increase the size, right? So I'll pick it about this second notch, maybe looks about right. So that's cool. Now I can see it a little better. Well, um, they're all blue, but maybe uh, I don't really necessarily know how World Bank is um, accounting for different regions around the world. So I would like to use the fact that I can change the color. So let's change the color by region. So I take a region in the same way that I drag and drop population of size, I drag and drop a region onto color. And I'm good to go. Now I can see a little color legend appears here on the left. There's these different regions and their colors. So East Asia and Pacific, if I click on this element of the legend, I can see that highlight. Europe and Central Asia and orange here at highlight. Latin America and green highlight and so forth. And actually all these things are kind of Okay, cool. So now I can see a lot more. And, and I think I get a good visual cue as to how the World Bank in this case is breaking up the different continents. I can see that you know, part of North Africa here is going into the Middle East and North Africa, while um, Sub Saharan Africa here is in the next part of the region below. This is one of the first low, the first sort of country to border the Mediterranean. That's how they're competing. Now, this is pretty cool, but what if I want to do is focus in on one? Well, I can use this, if I hover over the map, there's these little scrolls that appear in the top left. So I can use those if I wanted to, right? I can grab this little square, now the little room here, and I can zoom in on one region. That's fine. And you can notice now that Pablo is pinning the map in this location. If I want to go back, I can just click on the blue table to unpin it. If I click and hold, you'll notice the hand appears and I can move it around. Okay? Those are other ways to modify the map. And again, unpin. Or I can create a region as a filter as well as similarly to the way I created year as a filter. What if I want region as a filter? So I can take a region. I used it already in color, but I can use it again. It doesn't mean I can only use it once. I can use it more than once. How would I do that? Click the down arrow for region and say show quick filter, same thing, right? Actually, let me show you the other way to make a filter. One way, as we've seen here with years, is to put the down arrow to show quick filter. The other way, and with Tableau, there are usually a few ways to do uh, the same thing you want to do, is I can grab the region with the left mouse button and drag it into the filter area, drop it in there, and now Tableau says, well, hey, which, which do you want? Right? Well, let's pick, um, I don't know, let's just pick, so now it zooms in to just that one region. If I'd like to see this control, I can also now in this filter control for the blue region fill, I can get the down arrow and say so quick filter. What would that do? Well, it would put it over here as well, right? In this little quick filter area over to the right underneath the year quick filter, which is great because it makes it easier to make changes to the filter. I don't have to go back here and say edit the filter all the time. I can just directly click. This is one where I like to have it be a single radio button instead of a multi select combo button. So I would just change the filter again. I can edit what type it is to make it a single value list. Same thing. I can zoom in on each one of these and see how it is different. Mm -hmm. This is great. That's cool. Now I've got a region, I've got a year, and I've got a map. So I can certainly see the picture a little bit here, at least geographically. And we'll have a few more minutes, believe it or not. So I need to kind of hustle here. So I need to show you also how to make a timeline. So this is one sheet. It's good uh, best practices to name your sheet. So I don't want it to be completely called sheet one. So I'm going to double click here and I'm going to change it to world map. You see I'm typing here in the bottom tab name. Um, I named sheet one actually changing to world map. Great. So I got a world map. I can filter it by region. I can filter it by year. 
and I could show later how you can change this hover over to get more information. Always what we call a tool tip. See the tool tip? We can edit the tool tip. More on that later. But for now, I, I have this interactive version that my readers can see a, a, a visual picture of where the population of the world is located. But what if I want to show how that changed over time? Well, what we would want to do is make a timeline. So let's click on this little tab here to make a new sheet. Let's seek to, it pops up, it's back to the blank canvas. Okay. Let's make a timeline. So we can take this year date field and drag and drop. Now we're going to start to interact with this area over here. This is very important. This is probably the most important thing to learn with Tableau is how to use rows and columns. Well, if I make a timeline, I probably want it to go left to right. That's almost universal at this point, right? You always see timelines going left to right. Um, so, actually, let me undo this. Well, I want year, remember, I want to make a timeline, which is like an axis, so I want year to be continued. So now I've got year date being a green field. I put it up, up here, right? Why would I put it here? Well, this is making an x axis, isn't it? See how this is going from left to right across? And so if I do that now, uh, actually, you know what? Let me show you how to use the show me panel. I think this is going to be a more important way to do it. So click on year date, control click population, and region, moving down the control button. You see how they're all selected now? I use the control button. In, on this map, I think it's either option or man to hold down to multi select fields. I have three different fields highlighted. I click on show me. Notice that as soon as I open the panel, Tableau highlights in a colored version here all of the different visualization types that I can make. I want to make a continuous one. Let's just do year date and population. Let's keep it simple to start. Oh, I see what. Okay, yeah. So we'll do year date, population, year date, population, and click on the one that. Year date, population. That's pretty bizarre. No, so we need to have the year be in a column here. And we need to make this uh, year. Okay, <laughs> that didn't quite work out as well as it but what I've got now here is a year up on the column field. Let's back up. We'll take year date, let's drag it over here to column. I don't want to count the years, I want to actually sum them up. I want to actually I'll click in there, and actually I want this to be a year. All right, so I get a little hash line for all the years. Then I take the population and drag this onto rows, and I get a column. Okay, so that was a little more confusing than it should have been. I'm not quite sure why that didn't work out the way I wanted it to. I'll have to do some that. But um, in any case, you can see that I'm going from about 3 billion to about um, 7 billion, just over 7 billion. And I've got my straight line. You can see the almost perfectly linear, linear marks of the world's population over the past 50 some odd years. I can take region. But what if I wanted to say, hey, I'd like to see a different line for every region? I can just take region, drag it, just like I did before, under the other. And now that's interesting. I can see how each one of these regions has changed. And you can notice that, for example, Europe and Central Asia has a much lower growth rate than, say, for example, um, South Asia or Sub Saharan Africa, which seems like it's actually increasing the rate of population growth there. So that's an interesting story. Probably also these cross points are interesting stories. Okay, let's rename this sheet timely. Now, very simply, what we have is a world map showing where people are living in the current year. A timeline showing how that has changed over time. I could make more visualizations as well, and I want you to explore this as part of your homework assignment. Um, you can make different chart types and play with them, right? Maybe instead of a timeline, I want to show an area chart. Um, maybe I'd like to only see one map, or maybe I'd like to, you can see here that. You can make a whole lot of different types. Maybe if you're speaking to a technically uh, savvy audience, you can make, you know, I'm just going to hustle through here, but I can make, you know, a box and whisper plot here. Uh, oh, I know, sorry. I can make a box and whisper plot here. 
And I'm just jamming through here, so don't bother following me, but I can make this box on this plot for a number of different reasons. Yeah, I can see the outliers in these different reasons. So I can do a lot of different charts right here. I want you to play with it, and we'll call this box plot. We're running out of time here, so I want to show you how to make a story. Up here at the top, you click story, and say new story. So what's a story? All a story is doing here, right, is it's allowing me, notice that the view change. Instead of having dimensions and measures, I have the different sheets that I've created already. And a little uh, affordance telling me to drag sheet here and add a caption. So for example, if I drag the world map here and drop it, I could add a caption up here that says, this is where the population of the world is located. Um, and I can make a new point and say, right, drag the timeline here and say, here's how that has changed over time. And I'm not saying that this is necessarily uh, newsworthy, right? And that's not the point here. But it's more an exercise to help you learn how to use these different functions in Tableau. Uh, but you can imagine using the same type of a thing as we showed in the example at the beginning out of um, data sets that you have that are newsworthy, that, that tell the story of um, the area that you want to, uh, the readers are going to be reading from. Okay, so um, I can create this story and give it a title. Maybe I want this to say, world, um, the world's population, right? This is sort of a generic story here, the story of the world's population, right? Okay, very good. Great. Okay, so I can save this to the web. How do we do that? Well, once you're done creating the visualization in Tableau, you just go file, save to web as, and I'm going to save this to my Tableau public account. And you can, if you don't have one, you can create one for free. I sent the link there for that a little earlier. And say log in. And I'm going to name this as World Box and save it. And what you're going to get back here is a link. What I want you to do for your homework assignment, and I'll publish the details here on the Reddit board right after this session, but you just take this link, it's a URL. Let me copy this into the chat window. And so you can see what I've just created if you click in there, an interactive version of this exact same uh, data set that I just made in the application. It's just as easy, it's actually now on the web, just like uploading a video to YouTube and you get a URL back. You also get an embed code. You can copy and paste that embed code into your CMS um, to publish to, within your story. Okay, so we'll do a lot of things later, like considering design, how would you size the story, to make sure it fits into the page, um, and we'll do lots of different things like that. But for now, your homework assignment for week one, which we do at the end of the day Friday, is to use the world population data set that I have made available, and, or any data set that you want. So if you'd like to play with your own data set, you can. Just know that you may have some challenges with formatting. Um, so I feel free to ask me questions about that or put them on the board. Or if you want to keep it simple, just stick to the population data and just tell a simple story. And it doesn't have to be super um, creative, but you know, have fun with it. Feel free to tell a story about the world's population. Maybe it's a specific country. Maybe you want to look at um, a specific region. Maybe you want to look at ones that have gone up or down or, or talk about that uh, in that way. There's lots of different options for ways to tell stories with the population data. Great. So, with that, we're going to wrap it up now. So I didn't have too much time for Q&A, which I apologize for. I've lost the room, so I need to wrap it up here. But uh, in any case, thank you all for joining. And apologies about the audio um, snafu and the challenges with that. Thank you for sticking around and bearing with me through that. And hopefully next week in the lecture, which will also be on Tuesday of next week, and I'll send more information on that soon. Uh, we'll be able to have a little bit of a better experience there from the beginning there. Okay, so again, thank you all. Um, I am available, and just use that Reddit board for any questions that come up. And uh, again, here it is. So post your questions uh, to this board. Um,
and let's, let's interact here in this way. And so, um, yeah, let's, let's keep in touch. You have my email address, too. If there's anything that comes up, feel free to email me directly. If you have comments or questions, you can also use the Reddit board and we can get a discussion going that way. I prefer if you use the Reddit board to post questions just so that everybody can see. As I said, there's a good chance that if you have a question, someone else will. Okay, great. Thanks, everyone, again. And um, good luck with your first homework assignment this week. So again, it's just simply to make a story point with at least three different views that tell the story. With the great. Okay, thanks again. Take care, everyone, and we will talk soon.